My group looks for new genes, and we look for new genes that are of a particular type, called long non-coding RNAs. And the interesting thing about these uh, long non-coding RNAs, or link RNAs as we call them, is that for the past 50 years or so, the primary function of RNA has been this kind of middleman. You know, you've all learned in biology that DNA becomes RNA and becomes protein. But there's a whole lot that RNA does uh, outside of the context of being translated into proteins. And we're really now, uh, with the help of a lot of newer technologies and a newer interest in this, really looking at the wide variety of things that RNA genes themselves can do. Uh, more link RNAs have been found in the brain than any other tissue, uh, with the exception of testes. What we're really interested in asking the question is, do these link RNAs that we're discovering in these cell types actually contribute not only to the identity, but the function of these particular types of cells in the brain? One of the biggest challenges in neuroscience um, is we don't really know how many different types of neurons there are, how many different types of cells there are in the brain. We have a very good understanding of uh, how they're born and where they're born but really not what happens to them when they start to become more specific or, or mature. So one of the things that we can do now with some current technologies is called single cell RNA sequencing, where we can actually select a specific population of cells, in my case, uh, a subtype of neurons or a subtype of glia, and we can separate them into individual cells and then actually measure the expression of every gene at once in each individual cell and placing them in an order that represents their actual development in time. And we want to do this for a variety of cell types to not only ask how many different cell types can we identify, but what are the key points at which decisions are made to push a cell type from one from type A to type B.